One of the most frequently asked questions on my YouTube channel as well as my Instagram is how I design my UI UX case studies for Behance and my portfolio site. That is exactly what I'm gonna be showing you today, so stick around. Hey friends, I'm Maddie. If you're new to my channel, I am a strategic designer and currently a creative resident at Adobe where I'm focusing on UI UX design in the wellness space. I make videos about design, productivity, and making a living as a creative. So if you're into those things, feel free to hit subscribe. Today, we're gonna be taking a behind the scenes look at one of my UI UX case studies and I'm going to be showing you how I come up with a simple design system to follow all the way throughout. Not only does this make my life so much easier as a designer, but it also makes the project feel cohesive and actually really fun to read. So let's jump right into it. So when I go to create a case study, what I first do is of course open up the document where I have all of the screens from the project that I'm working on. And as you can see, that also comes with all of these styles. I have a bunch of colors that I've used and a bunch of character styles that I've used. And so what's actually really cool about Adobe XD is that you can share these between files. And so that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm basically going to reuse the style guide or the design system from this actual app project for the case study. So to do that, all I have to do is go up to document assets and I'm going to click this publish as library icon and it says current file food project, which is what we're currently in. And all I have to do is hit publish. And I don't need to invite anybody so I can just click out of that. And it's just gonna go ahead and load this up. Once it's done loading, then we can create a new file for our case study. So I'm going to go in and I'm gonna choose 1920 by 1080 because we're not really thinking of this as a project. We're thinking of it as like a presentation, something that's going to mostly be looked at on desktop in terms of Behance. And so I like to use 1920 width and the height can vary, but we'll just start out here. And while we're creating artboards, I might as well go ahead and create one for the thumbnail. So that is 1376 by 1080. And we're just going to name that thumbnail. What I like to do is stack these on top of each other. So we'll just start out with three. We can always change the height and we can always add more to the bottom. But I like to lay out my case study like this so that I can actually see how the um, PNGs will flow into each other. All right, let's give this file a name, case study. And then what we're going to do is go into libraries. And if you can see that is under this tab right here, libraries. And you can see now we have food project as a library. And so you just click into that and all of a sudden you have all of the colors that you used for that project, the character styles, and even the components. And so that's essentially what we're going to work off of for our design system. So now that I've set up this file, I'm actually going to open up the real case study that I have completely finished and walk you through how I did this. So as you probably know, if you've seen any of my Behance projects, I really love creating kind of like a flowing one page website, I guess you could say out of this. And I like for it to look really cohesive and be fun to read. And so that's kind of what I'm gonna show you how to do. And the main way that I do that is by using a design system. So there are several parts of the design system that we're going to talk about. Let's first start out with text. So you can see here, I have a few character styles. These are just what have carried over from the actual project. But when it comes to laying out text and research and you know actual like paragraph text, bullet points, um, and things like that, we're probably gonna need more text styles. So I'll show you all of the different text styles that I have used and sort of why I chose to use the ones that I did. So first we'll talk about the main headers and that's things like this, which this is actually an exception because I ended up drawing this by hand because I wanted it to look a little bit organic and imperfect, but essentially it's the same size and some of the same colors as this. So this is an H1 or a main header. So is this, 
and so is this, etc. Those are basically the headers of each section of my case study. And I should mention that I completely write my entire case study ahead of time in Google Docs and I actually spend a long time writing it, figuring out what the sections are going to be, figuring out um, sort of like the hierarchy and just sort of brainstorming what types of visuals are going to go into each section. But anyway, whenever I'm doing that outline or that um, sort of writing project, it will always have a bunch of like overall big headers and that is these. It's like the start of a section, so it should be really big. So that is why I have used this Kovic Sans Bold and I'm using it in a pretty big font, 120. So those are the H1s. And then the H2s are these. So what I've decided to do is make it all caps in order to make it look like a heading. I have tracked it out a good bit at 200 and I am also using bold. So Kovic Sans, that same font, but in bold. And we see that there, we also see it here, here. Another thing to note is that I really only use two fonts the entire time. I use Kovic Sans and I use Inter, and I just use variations of those two fonts throughout. So it still, again, is fun to read. There's a little bit of, um, you know, there's differences here and there, but overall it's really consistent and that just makes it nice to read as well. These I would say are a variation of the H2s. They're just a little bit bigger. And also I have used all of the headings in different colors depending on the background color. So we'll get there later. Um, another text style that I used is the large body text. And that is this, it's enter at size 50. And those are for things that are pretty important, like the problem statement, the hypothesis. And then we also have the smaller body text or like the regular body text, which is intermedium in size 30. And that I would say is the most common um, body text that I use and it comes into play throughout. And then here and there, I also use Kovic Sans in a smaller font, so. I use it here in 35 and it's medium and honestly the point of me saying all this is that I vary it up a lot. If you were to go through and count all of the different textiles, I think I would probably have five or six or even seven and that's totally okay because like I said, I'm sticking with really similar colors which we'll get into and also I'm sticking with only two fonts and just varying the fonts a little bit. Okay, let's dive into colors now. So in terms of colors, those come into play mostly with text, shapes, and um, background colors. So to start with background colors, you can see if we kind of zoom out, I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, background colors that I use the whole time. I use this texture, um, which is just like a super natural texture. It kind of looks like pulp um, paper. Then I have like stark white background. Then I have this really light gray background. And then I have this dark green background. And those are the only background colors that you see. We're just kind of alternating between them depending on what's going on top of them. And that also allows us to vary the text colors too, because when we're using these light backgrounds, we can use this dark green text, which is this color over here. And we can also use the light green text. Both of those look really nice on there. And we can also come in and use this color text, which is sort of our pop of color over here. I've just taken this and then upped um, the vibrance a little bit of it. And then when we're using this dark background, I can use the whites and the lighter colors on top of it along with this pop of color. Both of them work really well. Look at your color palette and choose just three or four background colors to alternate between in order to keep it interesting, but still keep it cohesive. In terms of colors that we're using for text and shapes and things like that, I really keep it kind of minimal there. So as you can see, I have a bunch of different color options here. Those are just all of the 
um, colors from the style guide that I used for the actual project, but I don't use all of them as you'll see. I use this dark green the most with text as well as this lighter green. We're seeing that bright green for the first time here in these wire or this um, information architecture flow. And then whenever we really get into these key moments, I have used this brighter color as the heading just to sort of differentiate it from the rest. Cause this is kind of the star of the show when it comes to the case study is the actual prototypes and the actual screens. So we have a little bit of a different look there bringing in this color for the first time. And yeah, that's really about it. So basically I'm not using all of these colors in each section. I'm ju just using two or three per section, but I'm kind of switching it up to keep it interesting. Next, let's talk about shapes and treatments. So what I mean by that really is just keeping things really consistent with how the app was designed. So very first thing you notice is that I've got these really rounded corners um, in elements of the app. And if you also look at the button style that I'm using, it's these rounded corners, but it's actually completely pointed on these diagonal sides. And so this button shape is something that I have actually carried through into the case study. So you can see that here where I've got the insights. This shape is that exact shape repeating again. And we also have it here where I'm showing this, um, these color swatches. And the most subtle place that we have it is here where we're actually using this shape. If I drag it around, you can see what that looks like. And I'm putting it in some of the corners to make it look like these are overlapping sections. And so that is just sort of an ode to one of the most prominent design styles that I've got in the app. And so that happens in various places, but it's very subtle. So that's happening here and here. And so you can see we sort of have this swoop effect there where it looks like it's overlapping. Same here. And I've got this shape here as well to sort of make that work along with this shape. And so that is something that I think adds a lot to this case study that you might not see at first glance. And that all kind of falls under the shape and treatment category. And sometimes here I'm just using this pill shape because that is also a shape that comes into play during the app as well. All right, let's talk about icons. So again, for some of these icons, I'm bringing in pieces from the app. So this scanning icon I'm bringing in to use for bullet points. Um, I think that's one of the only ones that I do in this case study. The other thing that I decided I wanted to do was bring in emojis. I really am a big proponent of adding visuals when you have a really text heavy case study. And this is a super simple way to do that that I would highly recommend. Lastly, let's get into imagery. So some of the imagery from this case study, I did take myself, for example, I took this where I basically took a photo of my boyfriend holding his phone and I had just a green image full screen up on his phone to act like a green screen. So then I was able to bring that into Photoshop and mask out the green and instead insert a screenshot from the app so that it looked like he was actually using the app even though it's not a working app. So we've done that there. We also did that here in the grocery store. He, this used to just be a green screen and then I was able to add what I wanted over top of it. So those are images that I took myself, but I also had other places in this case study where I felt like imagery would really help fill out the space. And so what I did was I went on to Unsplash and I just searched for relevant images. I feel like it was really important that they all had the same general tone of colors as well. So it's a little bit faded, um, you know, there are bright earthy colors in there, but the um, treatment of the photos is a little bit more faded and subdued. And so that's what you'll see in all of the photos here. We have some more 
up here as well, as you can see here and here. And I also used this, which came from the app as well, just the sort of target or scanning um, overlay. I used that on this to really just kind of bring the point home of what this app is all about since this is the very beginning of the case study. And lastly, some more photos that I included were these, which were actually taken by my research participants. So during the research phase, I just asked if they wouldn't mind snapping a photo of their fridge. And that was just a way for me to sort of give an ode to them and who they were and where they're coming from without showing their faces or using their names or anything like that. Um, but yeah, it was just a really relevant way of sort of putting the participants into this case study and showing a little bit about what we talked about during our research. All right, friends, that's about all I have to show you for today. If you like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe. And if you don't know, every few months I do portfolio reviews on this channel. So feel free to follow me over on Instagram at maddiebeer.ux where I ask for portfolio submissions as well as share more about design and answer your questions and all of that kind of stuff. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.